All right, in this video, I wanna go over Michaelis Menten Kinetics. This is a high yield topic for LAMCAT, so you definitely wanna make sure you pay close attention. To start, I wanna do a quick review of enzymes. As you might recall, enzymes are biological catalysts. Within cells, they're generally made of proteins, but there are some situations where you have enzymes that are made of RNA molecules. Now, as catalysts, there are several features of enzymes that I should be familiar with. Number one, enzymes increase the rate of the reaction by decreasing the activation energy. They do this by stabilizing the transition state. Number two, enzymes are not net consumed or produced during the reaction. So we often say that enzymes are recycled during the reaction. And finally, number three, enzymes are reaction specific. For example, if you consider glycolysis, the first step of the reaction is catalyzed by hexokinase, which converts glucose into glucose 6-phosphate. Hexokinase, however, is not able to catalyze any of the other steps in glycolysis, hence reaction specific. Okay, so now that we've reviewed enzymes, let's talk more about Michaelis Menten kinetics. This topic is describing the general catalysis of reactions by enzymes, and it's referring to this general reaction right here. We can see in this reaction that the enzyme binds to the substrate to form the enzyme substrate complex. The enzyme substrate complex can then react to form the enzyme and the product. There are several other important features of this equation. You can see we've got three K's in here, K on, K off, and K cat. As you recall in our videos on kinetics from general chemistry, the lowercase k stands for the rate constant, which is a description of how fast the reaction is. So you can think of k on as how fast the enzyme binds to the substrate to form enzyme substrate complex, k off as how fast the enzyme substrate complex dissociates to form the free enzyme and substrate, and finally, K-cat is referring to how fast the enzyme substrate complex forms that enzyme and product. You'll also notice within this equation that the first step is reversible. It can go in the forward and reverse directions, whereas the second step of the reaction is irreversible. Over here, we have the michaelis menten equation. This is describing V, the reaction velocity. The reaction velocity is how fast we are forming products. So how fast we're getting products in this equation right here. We have several other terms. We have V max, which is the maximum reaction velocity, S in brackets, which is the substrate concentration, and Km, which I've described for you in equation form down here in the bottom. K off plus K cat over K on. Now, Overall, this michaelis menten equation simply describes how fast is our reaction compared to the concentration of substrate and solution. For Km, this term is actually a little confusing if you just look at the equation. It's just a bunch of different terms put together. There are two more qualitative descriptions that I'm going to give you in this video. The first is that Km is equal to the substrate concentration when the reaction velocity is equal to one half maximum reaction velocity. You can tell this because in this equation, if Km is equal to the substrate concentration, then you have S over 2S, which is just one half V max on the right side. Now, this equation, there is a derivation for it. You don't need to know the derivation of this equation for the MCAT, but you do need to know the key assumptions that were made in deriving this equation. That way you know when you can and when you cannot apply michaelis menten kinetics. So here are the assumptions we're going to discuss. The first assumption is that this equation is only used to describe the initial reaction velocity. Right? So even though here V is just reaction velocity, it is assumed that it's only going to be used to calculate the initial reaction velocity. One of the consequences of this assumption is that the substrate concentration is much greater than the product concentration. And this makes sense because at the initial steps of the reaction, 
you haven't formed very much products yet. So you have a ton of substrate, not very much products. Our second assumption is steady state approximation. This is referring to the enzyme substrate complex. So if you look at this equation, enzyme substrate complex can be produced. It can also be consumed. So it can be produced when the enzyme binds to the substrate. And it can be consumed in two ways. It can either dissociate to reform the free enzyme and substrate, or it can react to form the enzyme in the product. The steady state approximation states that the rate of enzyme substrate complex formation is equal to its rate of consumption. So in other words, the enzyme substrate complex concentration is constant. All right. Our third assumption is the free ligand approximation. This assumption essentially says that the substrate concentration is much greater than the concentration of enzymes in solution. The reason for this assumption is that the total substrate concentration in solution is equal to the concentration of substrate plus the concentration of enzyme substrate complex. However, when the concentration of substrate is much greater than the concentration of enzymes, you can simply assume that the substrate concentration is approximately equal to the total substrate concentration. All right. Our last assumption is the rapid equilibrium approximation. This is referring to the rate constants. The assumption here is that the rate constants for the first step, K on and K off, are much greater than the rate constant for the second step of this reaction. Now, this has important consequences because here we're assuming that K off and K on are both much greater than K cat. I'm going to focus on this right here because if we look at our term for Km, we said that Km is equal to K off plus K cat over K on. However, if K off is much greater than K cat, then this simplifies to Km is approximately just K off over K on. And as you might recall, the rate constant for dissociation over the rate constant for association, this is equal to KD, the dissociation constant for the equilibrium of the first step of this reaction right here. You'll also recall that KD is a measure of the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate, that is, the greater the value of KD, the smaller or the lower the affinity of the enzyme for its substrate. So in other words, KD is inversely related to the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So here, our other description of KM is that KM is inversely related to the affinity of the enzyme for the substrate. So that's our second qualitative description of what KM is. All right. So again, these assumptions are important to know from MCAT. The next topic I want to discuss is catalytic efficiency. This is another aspect of michaelis menten kinetics that the MCAT often likes to test. Catalytic efficiency is essentially looking at how efficient your enzyme is at producing products. This is going to depend on two factors, Kcat and Km. So Kcat, because Kcat is how fast the catalysis occurs, how fast enzyme substrate complex can form enzyme and product. The faster this is, the more efficient your enzyme is. You also see that catalytic efficiency is inversely related to Km. That's because, as we described, Km is inversely related to affinity. If you want to have a very efficient enzyme, it should have a high affinity for its substrate and be able to bind easily. So if you divide by Km, if you have a very high affinity enzyme, 
then they have a very small value for the KM, which combined will give you a very large value for catalytic efficiency. All right. So the last topic I want to look at is the michaelis menten saturation curve. As I described earlier, this michaelis menten kinetics topic is really looking at how we can relate the reaction velocity to the substrate concentration. So if you use different substrate concentrations and measure the initial reaction velocity, you get a plot that looks like this. And there are several features of this plot that I want to point out. Number one, you'll see that as you increase the substrate concentration, the reaction velocity increases. However, it doesn't increase to an infinitely high value. It does reach a maximum value, which we can note here with this asymptote. This maximum value is V max, and it occurs when your enzyme has been, sub, has been saturated by the substrate. If we're able to draw in the V max, that means we can also point out the one half maximum reaction velocity value. And as you recall, we said that Km is the substrate concentration when your reaction velocity is equal to one half V max. So these are three important points you'll want to be able to recognize when you're looking at michaelis menten saturation curves. The last point that I want to mention is you also need to be able to describe what type of curve this is. And the answer is that this is a hyperbolic curve. And the MCAT does ask questions about this, whether curves are linear, whether they're exponential, whether they're logarithmic, or in this case, if it's hyperbolic.